Welcome all you awesome painters. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this easy to do moody midnight ocean seascape done on black gesso with a Polaroid flare. This is perfect for beginners, so let's get started. We first want to start with adding a thin coat of liquid clear on top of our already dried black gesso. Now we're going to add a middle band of purple right in our canvas. Any purple will work here, so choose what works best for you. Then we're going to put a band on top and on bottom of that purple using phthalo blue. And yes, you want to cover the entire canvas with your purple and blue colors. With a dry and clean one inch brush, start blending in that beautiful purple color. Now start to pull that purple up into the blue at the top of our canvas to create a beautiful gradient at the top. Clean off your brush, go back to the purple and start pulling that color down towards the base of our canvas into that blue to make sure that we have a beautiful gradient all the way through our background. With titanium white and a smaller round brush or any small brush that you have control with, start dropping in and scratching in some color with a little bit of paint. This is going to represent our glow from our light source that's going to cascade across our sky and lay across our clouds. Just remember where your light source is and put the paint most there so that way it's the boldest and vivest of colors. Then as you move away from that light source, start adding less and less paint or put less and less pressure on your paint brush. This will look like the light source is actually fading the further it gets away from the light source. With a clean and dry one inch brush, start blending your light source with cross strokes. Start at the light source and work your way out to the edges of your canvas. This will ensure that you pull that light source white color out to the edge and let it fade naturally, creating a beautiful fading light source. Using the same brush, color, and technique, we're going to enhance our light source by putting soft, moody clouds on top of it. The light source that we created is a perfect template for our paintbrush to follow for our second and third layer. Just drop in some color, think about how the light source would cascade across your clouds, and pull the color in the corresponding direction. The harder you push with your one inch brush, the more your clouds will fade, and the softer you blend, the more they will stand out. I recommend having more detailed clouds near your light source, and then have them fade away as they get away further from the light source. With a script liner brush with titanium white paint on it, I'm going to drop in a guideline of where my clouds are going to be. Now, this is just a template. Be free and loose, but to get that paint to come off of that script liner brush, remember to twirl and use all the bristles. With your cloud outline template in place, we can pull the paint down with that same script liner brush. This just makes it easier for me to pull and fade clouds the way that I want them to be. Remember to pull in the direction of your light source so that way your clouds cascade in the correct direction. With a soft brush, preferably a round or a filbert brush, we can start pulling the crowns of our clouds down and into the body of our cloud to give it more shape and form. Take your time here. You want to use soft strokes at first to build the body, then you can apply more pressure to get your clouds to fade in whatever direction you want. Once again, remember where your light source is and fade your clouds away from it so that way you add to the light effect. To add more highlight to your clouds and give that glow effect, all you need is your round brush in titanium white and stipple in paint on the outside edge of your clouds. Remember to fade away as you get further away from your light source. From here, take a clean, dry, 
one inch brush and start to gingerly and softly blend everything together. If you're a brand new painter, first of all, welcome to the channel. You generally push too hard with your bristles when blending, which means you may have gotten white paint in spots you don't want it to be. An easy fix for this is just take any junky brush that you have that it's smaller and stiffer bristles and go in between the gaps and remove paint and wipe off on a clean blue shop towel, which is in my off hand here. Remove the paint and scratch it away, then wipe it off on the blue towel and go back. Remove it in sections where you think it's going to have the greatest effect. Generally, the further away you are from your light source, the better because more black would show in those areas. Freehanding straight lines is extremely hard, so I recommend just cheat like me and use a ruler with thin down white titanium paint on a script liner brush. Use your ruler, go straight across to mark off the horizon. With that thin down paint, we can pull straight down with a flat brush or angled shader, so that way we just make a soft line for our template here. We can fade it even further by using a one inch dry brush and going back and forth straight across to fade it into the background. Take a small fan brush with titanium paint and we're going to use this to build the body of our ocean with our turbulent waters creating white caps. Start at the top of your horizon line and start brushing down with a little more pressure. This will put more paint on the canvas and mix with that undertone of purple, creating a beautiful transition from a milky white to a nice lavender, making it look like moonlight is cascading on our ocean. As you work your way down the waves, add a little bit of a U-shape into your strokes. This will help us with a template for waves later on. As you do work your way down, remember to lighten up on your brush strokes because this will introduce less paint to the canvas, mimicking that light is fading away from the horizon line and getting closer to us. Now take a clean, dry one inch brush and start blending in our ocean body. This way we get a beautiful transition of colors from our white to our blues and our whites to our purples and our milky white will perfectly blend into everything else creating a beautiful moonlight effect. With a palette knife that has titanium white on the end of it, we can use this to make our turbulent waters, our waves and our white caps. All you wanna concentrate on is making lines across your canvas that are even. Don't worry about them being one consistent line. Actually, if you have broken and sporadic lines, that adds to the turbulent water look. All I want you to be concerned about is having tighter clusters of lines near the horizon. And as you work your way down the canvas, start spreading those lines out further and further. This will mimic the illusion that waves are coming closer to us in our perspective. Now it's completely up to you on how rough you wanna make your water look and how many waves are in it. I think for this one right here, it actually looks really good with adding a lot of waves. It looks like a tough spot to surf at night and it goes oh so well with that sky. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I really love adding texture to my white caps. As I get closer to the bottom of my canvas, I like to load my knife with more paint and really push, drag, and scratch that knife in there and leave little ridges of white, really adding to the effect of the white caps. Now, don't adjust your YouTube channel. I went ahead and flipped my canvas. I find it easier to actually pull color down and towards me, which I want to do on the back end of my wave. Some of my palette knife strokes were a little heavy and I wanna add the effect of pulling that blue color underneath on the back end as if the water and wave is curling up and over. So I'm gonna take a script liner brush and feather the back end of some of my waves here. With a soft one inch brush, I blend everything softly together. 
If there's any parts that I don't like or white paint or different colors got in spots I don't like it or I just want to darken things up to add more contrast, I'm going to do the same technique I did within my sky and clouds and use a smaller round brush to remove paint and wipe it off on a paper towel and repeat the process on any spot I just don't like or want to improve. Now, like I said, I love texture and I'm gonna go back over where I can easily see my waves because there is a nice template of highlighted color and add more texture with my palette knife with just a little bit of titanium white on the end. I use the fat part of the blade and also the thin part of the blade depending on if I wanna add more texture or need a little bit more control. Yeah, I'm gonna take some of this texture all the way up to the middle and even a little bit on top of my painting because I just love the way texture looks. When I make texture in the middle of my ocean and near my horizon line, I'm actually only using a little bit of paint and tapping in lines here and making broken straight lines. I want there to only be a little bit of texture and I want my bigger texture pieces to be closer near the bottom. This is helping to create the illusion of depth within the ocean. Doing a painting tutorial on top of a black surface can be difficult to show, which is why I overexposed the camera. If I adjust the camera to normal exposure, now you can see all the beautiful colors, the gradients they leave, and all the fun details of the light hitting the highlights and the clouds and on the waves. All we have to do now is remove the painter's tape to expose our beautiful Polaroid style. If you have good penmanship, I recommend you sign the bottom of our Polaroid painting. For me, I'm gonna call it Moonlight Tides. I think that works perfectly with what we painted here on top of our black gesso. Our sky has that beautiful glow in the clouds and the light source, allowing the blue and purple to shine through on the soft diffuse clouds. On our horizon, we've got that beautiful milky color that allows the purple and blue and some of the black to shine through as it cascades down on top of our turbulent waters with awesome white caps done with a palette knife adding beautiful texture. This right here is a perfect wet on wet oil painting for any new painter out there, so give it a try. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching me paint this awesome and easy to do seascape painting done with a Polaroid flare. If you're interested in wet on wet painting or oil painting and don't know where to start, I have an easy downloadable PDF that you can find in the video description below. Want me to paint something else? Hey, let me know in the comments down below while you're hitting that subscribe button. And if you wanna paint a landscape in this Polaroid style, check out the videos over to my side where I will see you for more awesome tutorials. Check you all later, and of course, peace.